Yeah, we're back with these guys again. For a little bit of context, the joke here is that the guy went to the eye doctor and now has his eyes dilated. Anyways, once they start getting to the point, the guy gives a surprisingly decent explanation of natural selection. After that is where we're picking up. But rather than this process producing just the varieties we see among animal kinds, they believe this process built those animals from completely different ones and can eventually lead to one kind of animal turning into another. Define kind, or better yet, use an actual scientific term. But I bet you won't, because once you stop making your claims incredibly vague, it becomes easier to demonstrate how incorrect you are but this has never been observed. You're right, we haven't directly observed something that takes millions upon millions of years to occur. Does that make it impossible? Does that completely defeat all of the other evidence we have for it? Like comparative anatomy, comparative genomics, and the fossil record? Fish are still fish, and finches are still finches. Well, yeah, fish is an incredibly general term, and frankly, fish are already incredibly fit to survive in their environment, so they don't really need to change. But finches are a different story. There is no evidence that birds existed 200 million years ago, and there's strong evidence that birds evolved from certain dinosaurs. Sure, they've been finches for as long as we've seen them, but they weren't always that way, and probably won't stay that way. Evolutionists believe natural selection figured out how to design an eye. No, natural selection didn't figure out anything. Instead, it molded the process in which eyes were formed. Eyes were made from millions and millions of years of slight modifications, each modification more beneficial for the organism. This has been explained many times before, so I'll just put a link or something here, but suffice it to say that we know how the eye evolved. But how? It would have to build and preserve over who knows how many generations hundreds of complicated interacting eye parts, including proteins that were all useless until the whole package was eventually assembled. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure about the whole useless protein thing, and that's a pretty poor way of looking at it, but yeah, that's essentially correct. How'd it know to engineer animals for flight? Or a navigation system so tiny it can fit in the head of a monarch butterfly, which is smaller than a pin? How'd it wire a human brain that's far more complicated than our best computers if it is a totally blind process with no goal or purpose in view? Argument from incredulity. I can't imagine how it happened, therefore it's impossible. Sure, things are complex, but natural selection didn't have to design it in order for it to appear. It just so happens that the more complex a certain structure was, the more likely it was to survive. Also, all of these things took an incredibly long time to happen. So yeah, there was plenty of time for these things to be naturally produced and refined. You're right! Natural selection is just a process. It doesn't have a brain. It can't think or design. It had no foreknowledge of what it was trying to accomplish. So what? You don't need to know what your actions are going to do in order for them to do something. And yet, coupled with mutations, it's been assigned godlike powers to create things way beyond man's understanding. We can't understand it, therefore God did it. It's funny how you think your uneducated misunderstanding of Darwinian evolution is ridiculous for being assigned magical powers, but the magic man in the sky with more power is completely understandable. Darwinian evolution doesn't have godlike powers. Instead, it has the power to change the characteristics of organisms a little bit at a time and then select which characteristics make it. In a short time span, these changes are minute, but over lots and lots of time, like millions and millions of years, it can make a big difference, especially when certain changes allow even better changes. Yes! It's like they've replaced God's power with random mutations and natural selection. Or have you replaced evolution by natural selection with God's power? Also, natural selection is supposed to mean survival of the fittest. But what if <clears throat> someone, nobody in particular, you know, had their eyes dilated and was leaving when they knocked over the fish tank in the waiting room? You did it. Anyway, if exactly half of them died because I di they didn't get them in the water, was it survival of the fittest? <laughs> no, it was survival of the luckiest. Well, that event had nothing to do with their traits. It was just a catastrophic event. And we know of several events that caused mass extinctions in the past, like with the dinosaurs. But that doesn't change the fact that traits can influence how well an organism can survive. So evolution that turns a simpler organism into a fruit fly relies on mutants becoming better able to survive as new genetic information is added and then surviving to pass their genes onward. Mutants are usually worse off since most mutations are harmful, and natural selection actually cleanses the population by killing the less fit mutants. 
This might help keep the most effective traits within a population. So the real world works exactly opposite of what evolution requires. Bingo. What? No. That's exactly how the world works. We have scientific evidence for all of that. And while lots of small mutations can give a survival advantage in specific environments, virtually all the real life examples show a loss of genetic information, not a gain. Evolutionists have tried to propose various genetic explanations, like gene duplication, but they're putting their faith in a process that has never actually been observed. What's gene duplication? It's when a whole gene accidentally gets copied and then it mutates to become another new gene. Nice story. Have scientists ever seen that happen? Nope. Never. You've got to be joking. This is completely factually incorrect. Here's a study that shows genes duplicating in yeast. Here's a study that shows pancreatic gene duplicating and that gene taking a new role in a monkey. Here's evidence for gene duplications in some fish. Here's evidence for gene duplication in cannabis. Need I go on? And most examples of supposed evolution in action involve things like chemical pathways and small changes in proteins, but how do you get a fin to turn into a limb and then a human hand. Glad you asked. First, fish with fins lower on their body make a home in more shallow water and begin to use those fins to push themselves around. As this happens, the fins become stronger and stronger until the fish are able to sort of crawl onto land, kind of like mud skippers. As the organism becomes more amphibious, its limbs become more like, well, amphibians. From there, it's pretty much just a matter of the limb getting bigger, stronger, and acquiring some structural changes, like the digits becoming more and more independent. Sure, this process didn't have a mind of its own, but everywhere along the way, new traits were formed at random, and these particular traits did give the organism an advantage. Not that your personal incredulity was any sort of argument to begin with. They tell interesting stories about how it must have just happened. Well, so do you. You believe that a magical tyrant started talking to himself, and it all just happened. But I can't find any evidence it actually happened. Well, you didn't even fucking look. I know that I've pointed to this several times before, but there's a whole Wikipedia article dedicated just to evidence of common descent. So, a typical mutation removes information, but only a mutation that can add information really explain how philosophers came from fish. Yes, the addition of genetic material is required to some extent, but we've seen these types of mutations. What we haven't seen, however, is disproof of it. And if you think about it, natural selection can't create anything. It can only deselect by killing whole individuals with traits that are already present in a population. That's what evolution is for. That's why we call it evolution by natural selection. Wow, you're right. You can only select something that is already present. How could nature ever add information to some DNA by subtracting some of what is already there? Are you just going to keep doing this? Are you just going to keep hammering your unwarranted and demonstrably false assertions? Great question. And speaking of information, here's another question evolutionists have not even come close to answering. How could chemicals from early Earth spontaneously form molecules with information? That's a stretch. First off, define information. Because as far as I'm concerned, information is just genetic material. And that's incredibly easy. Second off, when anyone brings up abiogenesis, I like to point to Sidney W. Fox, who showed that what he called proteinoids, and even protocells, could be formed spontaneously in the conditions of the early Earth. All that is needed to start Darwinian evolution is something to form that can replicate and that can change as it replicates. We've seen that happen. So. Natural selection can't do anything without mutations, and mutations can't even happen unless DNA forms from some muddy puddle billions of years ago. You got it. There's no known mechanism for creating information like we find in DNA from simple matter. Information always comes from a mind. All right, that's it. They're just going to keep saying the same things that I have already covered on top of vague, unwarranted assertions. If you want to see for yourself, I've decided to start linking to the original videos. I'm doing this solely for reference, so please don't go and attack or flag these guys. Sure, we disagree with them, but nobody's taking them seriously anyways.